Something that I thought was really interesting about the Z690 platform is that while it does support PCI Express Gen 5, I had sort of expected PCI Express Gen 5 to make its way into the uh, storage. But the way the CPUs are actually configured is with 16 PCI Express Gen 5 lanes, which are by default just all shunted over to the PCIe 16X slot, meaning that the only devices that are gonna be able to take advantage of PCI Express Gen 5 on a typical consumer system are gonna be GPUs. So we are pretty much stuck with PCI Express Gen 4 storage speeds for the, at least until AMD releases a PCIe Gen 5 platform, because it's pretty clear that if Intel thought there was a benefit to it, they could have built in another five lanes. But you wanna know what my conspiracy theory is about this? I think that ultimately it's the current gen consoles that are dictating oh. how fast storage should be today. Interesting. I also think there's really not much point building an M.2 NVMe drive on a PCI Express Gen 5 interface because we're already under realistic loads, like other than just, all right, I got, I got part of this drive in Under SLC cache mode benchmark, and yeah. I am sequentially reading and writing data and that's it. In any other reasonably <laughs> real world workload, we are so far from even fully utilizing PCI Express Gen 4 by 4 that it's a joke because we're, we're limited by the controllers, we're limited by especially the NAND dies. And that's not going to change as we as we get to five bit per cell flash. That stuff ain't getting faster. And if anything, it's become more difficult to find flash devices that will perform the way that you might expect them to based on the spec sheet. Yeah. Yeah. Things are getting a little messy. Right. I mean, we've got these 12K cameras that we're getting rid of, uh, <laughs> but those 12K Blackmagic cameras and finding an external USB-C drive that could actually handle sustained writes at those kinds of bit rates was extremely difficult, even though almost all of them had a label that said they should be able to handle it just fine. But that's because most of them are using some kind of uh, like caching algorithm yeah. to intelligently write really quickly and then flush that to slower NAND uh, that's running in a different operating mode over time. Um, because it, the dies just aren't capable of it. And you're not going to be able to just parallelize it more because you're limited by this M.2 form factor that you can put a maximum of what, like four NAND dies on? That's it. So until we stack them higher, um, eliminate some of those internal bottlenecks, I can see why until basically went, yeah, PCIe Gen 5 storage is just not a thing for now. So I guess let's just not bother. And... You know, if there's going to be any kind of benefit from faster storage on the desktop, especially for gamers, I think it's pretty much going to come down to Microsoft Direct Storage. Does ga do ga <sighs> you, you mentioned gamers a couple of times, like uh, consoles holding back and stuff like that. How, do you think that really influences hardware stuff that much? Well, I think what it influences is figuring out, you know, what you're targeting for a platform. So right now, what we know is Microsoft is working on direct storage, which is going to allow PC gamers to get similar functionality to what the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox series is yeah. have, where they, especially in the case of the PlayStation 5, might even be able to actively stream assets from the SSD straight to the video card's uh, frame buffer and without even passing through um, through system memory. So that's... That's super cool, right? But the, sorry, what was your question? Actually, I like slept like two and a half hours last night. I can barely keep my brain going. Yeah, no, all good. Um, right, are we, are we limited? Right, right, right. So what we know is that we've got this functionality coming to the PC. That's on the horizon. But beyond that, faster storage on the desktop has been for freaking lulls I just think, and for like, a long time. Maybe it's changed under, under Pat Gelsinger's guidance, but I... I we probably both remember there was a certain content creator that was brought to Intel back in the day to like explain why gamers care at all about Intel CPUs yes. because the board just had no idea that people use their CPUs for gaming. Um, that was awkward. So sometimes <laughs> I'm just kind of wondering like, do, are they actually comparing against consoles? Do they actually care? Do they really think about, gamers at all maybe they do more these days maybe that meeting 
had a little bit more impact. It's also entirely possible that this was mainly a marketing bullet point, but mm. why would you bother making it a marketing bullet point unless you think there's some kind of compelling story you yep. can tell around it, right? Yep. And that's a compelling story that I, I would probably want to tell. Yeah, we've got PCI Express Gen 5, which on the desktop is going to be for gaming. Yeah. That's it. Like Workstation, yeah, sure, totally different conversation. And there's a rumored X699 platform. So th it looks like we're going to get an HEDT platform again. Absolutely. You go PCI Express Gen 5 there. Now we're talking high-speed networking. Now we're talking high-speed storage arrays, right? Yeah. We're not talking yeah. one drive because you might actually be working with large scientific data sets that you need to be able to to parse extremely quickly, right? You might have these enormous databases that you're looking things up and you might need all this IO, right? On the desktop, you don't need that. The main yeah, thing generally. pushing forward the need for faster PCI Express on the desktop is going to be gaming, whether it's that top 16x slot for your GPU or whether it's your storage. And we know that console generations, they refresh you know, what, every like four to seven years or whatever, whatever Somewhere the numbers are, unless yeah. your name is Nintendo, in which case you just slap a new screen on it and call it a day. So <laughs> what we know is that for, for literally the entire service life, of a PC that someone is going to buy today, like a typical service life, five or six years, no game developer is going to target faster storage than PCI Express Gen 4x4. Yeah. yeah. That's it, because that's what Sony's got in the PlayStation 5, and then Microsoft's actually half that speed, if I recall correctly. So I, I, I do think that that could be a factor. It's also probable that they were working on the design for this platform three years ago and might have just had no idea. For all they knew, maybe NVIDIA was going to have a PCIe Gen 5 GPU to launch at this time. Maybe that got delayed by the pandemic and the whole thing was supposed to line up in a... Oh, whoops, I guess we've got competition. I guess we've yeah. got Gen 5 motherboards and no Gen 5 devices to put in them. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, there, remember that whole awkward thing where AMD hadn't updated their chipsets for like however many years in the, the dark time, the bulldozer times? Yeah. And AMD went out and launched, what was it, Gen 3? Gen 3 GPUs when they literally didn't have a Gen 3 platform that you could stick these GPUs in. <laughs> yeah. So poor... That was... That was there was a lot of memes. Yeah. So poor AMD, right? They had to do their... They had to do their launch video using an Intel platform to show off the gaming performance really of their of their poor graphics card, right? I mean, not, not anymore, obviously, but those kinds of things absolutely happen. You can't expect all of these ducks to magically perfectly align, right? 